All right, so you know about the Nobel Prize, right? It's like the Olympics of science, right? Everybody, everybody knows about, about that. So the Nobel Prize in chemistry was recently given to a team that, create, that were the architects of something called metal organic frameworks or metallic sponges at the molecular level. Shelby, what are these metallic sponges about? Roman, you are way underselling this. This is super cool. We're talking about a metal that is basically a super sponge, okay? Mm -hmm. We're talking about applications like sucking greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere and cleaning up all of the exhaust and fumes that come out of mass industrial plants. Or, in some cases, that's already being tested in uh, Death Valley in California, there is an example of literally being able to suck water out of the air to provide for agriculture in the desert. Mm -hmm. Climate change is over. <laughs> so, so, what, so what is it? Like, what does it look like? It looks like a cube and then it sucks in water? Have you ever played as a kid or maybe your son with like tinker toys? The small little toys, they're like small rods and they're connected with ball magnets to form little you know, geometric structures. Yes. Basically it looks like that. So here's how it happens. Through a whole bunch of chemical processes that I'm not gonna bore you with the details of, um, they crystallize this type of substance into something that has a really strong structural framework, but it has huge gaps inside the material, so it can hold material. One of the chairs of the Nobel Committee actually likened this to Hermione's bag, um, because you know it's a very, very small amount of material that can hold something insane. Let me give you a reference point on that. I have a little prop somewhere around here. Ah, yes. So for the amount of material that weighs one gram, AKA your average paper clip, okay, it can hold a football field's worth of material. What? Think about that for a second. This is the Charmin Ultra Strong, <laughs> uh, the Huggies Premium <laughs> Version, wait, wait. Ultra Absorbent. Because the way they describe it, because this, this helped me a lot in understanding what it was, because it's, it, imagine what, um, what Shelby was describing. So the point is, it has as much surface area as a football field, but it's only that big. And so that surface area is, you know, how it's absorbing and, and, and containing everything in the spaces in between. But if you think about it, the amount of surface area, think how tiny and so many little rods and stuff like that, that helped me kind of visualize the impossibility of what I'm trying to visualize. Yeah, I think there are a thousand different kinds of this particular material, this metal organic framework, but the most absorbent one, if you will, I think the exact number is roughly 85,000 square feet of surface area per gram of material. That's crazy. Hold on, hold on. I, I just still don't quite understand. But, okay, so let's say it's a, it, what does it look like to the human eye? It looks like a powder in most cases. Ah, okay. So it's a powder. Well, and then you pour, and you, some... and you, what, you can like pour a waterfall into it and then it'll just go in? <laughs> like, is that, is that how it works? Excuse me. Um, the potential, <laughs> Definitely not. The potential for this is crazy. I'll tell you that. If we actually throw some images up on screen um, afterwards, uh, these very, very small devices basically that are used more like pilots or prototypes, the application of them is huge. We're talking about very, very small devices that can, you know, pull in material that to us would seem limitless. But, but, okay, so, but again, like, is it, or am I misimagining it? Like, you have a, let's say, a, a, a plate of this powder, which is a lot, I guess, if every little molecule of this powder holds the amount of square footage as a football it field. A pond and it gets dry. Right, is, is, that, is that it? So you toss it into a pond and the pond, like all the water comes there and that's it? Let me describe it like this. I'll give you the practical applications, okay? So there are a couple of companies that are, this is still on the small scale. I'll get to the history in a second. Picture a company in California that is creating basically thin filters that could be used in conjunction with industrial plants to suck up all the emissions. Mm -hmm. Actually, what's really interesting about this, if you think about the semiconductor industry in particular, that's one of the big applications that they're talking about in very early stages that this may be able to you know, have massive ripple effects in. When you think about semiconductor production, you're thinking about you know, bringing in materials, you're thinking about power costs, you're thinking of high-end tech. What you're not thinking about is the massive amount of fumes and other things that are emitted in part of the process. This could actually present a solution to that in the future. Okay. Okay. But again, it, 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 is it, I guess it like, 
as, as a molecule, it just is able to take a lot in, in from the perspective of a molecule, but it's not able to take in like a, a waterfall, right? Because that's, that's still what, I, what I'm trying to, what you're trying to figure out. Like, yes or no, will, will it be able to, a plate? The science doesn't quite work like that. I, I could, yeah, that, that's like that's like magic, right? Okay, <laughs> but it has to be a gas. It can't be a liquid. Typically, what, it's okay. gas. Yes. Sure. Uh, we're talking about water vapor here. You okay, know, like sure. things like yes. or things like CO two. One, one of the other things they're talking about it could store hydrogen. So if you have a hydrogen uh, fuel cells. But it wouldn't be a big bulky engine, right? It'd be something very, very small. Yeah, so this technology is not actually anything new. It's just been very quietly existing uh, for uh, actually about the past 30 years. But the interesting thing is um, back in the early 2000s with George W. Bush in office, he was really a big proponent of what was called like the hydrogen, like basically hydrogen as a fuel, as a replacement or, you know, in addition to to kind of mitigate the use of fossil fuel. Um, he was pushing really strongly for that at the time. Not only the technology wasn't really there yet specifically for hydrogen, again, I won't get into the crazy chemical discussion about that. Um, it didn't really work, but now we're actually being able to look at that again and kind of revisit the application for that, possibly in the future. More development needed. Oh, here's an application. So like trapping gas emitted by fruit so that it ripens more slowly. Yeah, I mean, that's on the small scale. Obviously, uh, you know, if it keeps your uh, avocados uh, in better condition, that's great, you know? But uh, think about being able to bring a consistent source of water to an arid landscape. Mm. Do you have anything, so I, one of the scientists, he was comparing it to like, basically this is the new plastics in the sense that plastic is ubiquitous, right? It's in everything now. We can't imagine life without plastic, that this is what this is. Are there any, so I'm just trying to imagine like earlier Nobel prizes for chemistry that we could equate this to that ended up becoming, you know, oh, that yeah. big of a deal. I can give you a couple of big ones. One of my personal favorites is uh, something you might know as the lithium ion battery. Uh, yeah, uh. started quiet, not so quiet now, right? You know, mm. smartphones, electric cars, computers, pretty much everything in between. Yeah, so this this mm. starting point of winning this award is really, Oh, there's another fun one, which is uh, back in 1907, I want to say, the award was given for uh, research into the fermentation of yeast in bread. So, you know, if you enjoy a good piece of toast dough. in the morning, yeah, <laughs> you might want to thank that uh, Nobel Chemistry Prize as well. But here's the thing. So not only the application of that, but this tech has been around in early stages of development for 30 years. It's also, okay, the Nobel Prize presents an opportunity for a lot of science that otherwise people just wouldn't hear about, right? You know, not everyone is gonna go and read your science journal or your nature articles or what have you. So something that kind of, an opportunity that brings this into the public eye, what that presents in a lot of cases for this kind of emerging tech is an investment opportunity, right? It gives this technology a platform to then get public interest in it enough that it can then grow. This particular tech um, is actually projected to skyrocket about 30 times over in the next five to 10 years, jumping up to, I want to say, 930 to 940 million dollars in market share. Mm, what's the ticker? That, just one <laughs> that one will have to get back to you. That one will have to get back to you. Not investment advice. Yeah. Oh, here's, an, here's another interesting there are example. There quite a few companies, by the way. They're, they're small, but there are numerous companies that are actually trying to get in on this. Again, it's just uh, quiet, but it may not be quiet for much longer. Mm, mm, not mm. after this episode. Right. Okay, so here's another one. So in previous experiments, a metallic organic framework that this doctor's group worked on captured water vapor at night and then used the heat of the, of the sun to convert that water vapor into water the next day. So that's an interesting uh, use case, right? You can like have this item that collects water vapor at night and then in the morning, the sun heats it up and then you have water. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. I mean, the, obviously the small scale application is basically like this, but think about multiplying that many, many times over. Mm. What happens when you accidentally consume some of this? Because <laughs> I know that's the inevitable. Let's we're talking about we don't plastics, find out. right? Now we have all these issues with microplastics. Mm. What can come of this? Well, would you eat metal? No, but if it's there so small, are. who knows? <laughs> We're going to eat it eventually. You're going gonna, 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 to implode into food. yourself. Know, like I'm worried about a portal <laughs> opens up and you're not a spleen anymore. One other quick point, I just want to mention this because personally I think it's very cool on the whole Nobel Prize front. Obviously this award, in no matter the category you're giving it to, there is controversy surrounding it. However, there is a really nice point to kind of bring up here. 
one of the three scientists that was given the honor with this chemistry award is he actually in his kind of statement to media afterwards was talking about how he comes from a very very humble background you know i believe it was he said uh his parents were refugees and he's from jordan this is just one of the three gentlemen and he remembers growing up sharing a bedroom with about a dozen other people and also the cattle that was like linked to the family's income at the time so say what you want about the nobel you know prize in any capacity but this is something that can really bring attention to intellectual greatness and you know re-inspire curiosity in a lot of ways and you know maybe fuel the next generation's intrigue in wanting to discover the next big thing right oh i totally agree you know it, it really is like the olympics you know you don't usually think about many sports throughout the year but then you tune into the olympics and you're like wow, that guy, I didn't even know you could do that with your with your body, you know? It's like, same thing here. I, I never even thought you can arrange molecules in a certain, <laughs> a certain way to create a football field's worth of surface area in a small space. All right, uh, any final thoughts? I really look forward to seeing where this tech goes. Mm. Me as well. All right, I know exactly what you're thinking. That was a great clip you just watched. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to follow and also check out either these videos or maybe they're on this side. I don't know which side they're on, but we set it up. So these are the videos that YouTube is suggesting to you as the best ones that you'll probably like the most. So check them out this side, this side.